Bonjour, bienvenue à Spectacle Go Greenfield avec mon viveur, Ami Tara. We're back after having an amazing time dining at Fleur de Sel. We wanted to recreate our favorite dish, so we'll be preparing Parisian gnocchi with bison. For our ingredients for the gnocchi, we are going to use grass-fed, um, grass-finished organic buffalo, Italian parsley, organic, um, tomatoes, San Mar Marzano tomatoes, um, some, some Dijon mustard, organic whipping, heavy whipping cream, some Parmesan, Parmesan cheese. We're going to grate it and make it great. Um, some garlic. We're going to have some chives, basil, and some pasture-raised eggs, and last and some butter, and also some horseradish, which actually can help a lot with uh, sinuses, colds, and just kind of like aches and pains. It's pretty good. So now we're making our tomato sauce, and we are um, making it very arrabbiata, which means uh, angry in the mouth in Italian, which basically means we're making it really spicy. So now we're putting the tomatoes into our tomato sauce, and we're squeezing the tomatoes so it just breaks it down and makes it easier to digest. Sauce. So the next step is to blend it with an immersion blender. So now we've mixed our uh, water, flour, and butter to make our gnocchi dough. And we just have to keep stirring it to make sure it doesn't stick to the edges. So now we're going to put the gnocchi in a bag and squeeze a little bit out, cut it off, and put it in the boiling water for about one minute. And see how many we can do in a minute. Let's see. Today we're using olive oil from Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. Hi guys, I just wanted to tell you something. We are really proud of our renewed sponsorship with Fresh Pressed Olive Oil. If you haven't tried any, it's really good. And if you're still using the commercial oils, you don't know what you're missing out on. And if you want to get a bottle for just $1, you can go to gogreenfields.com forward slash olive oil to get yours today. Really good. So once all the gnocchi is floating, you're going to cook it for an additional three minutes. Voila! Bon appetit! Yay! Oh, Alright, can, can I try? Yeah, you can try some. <laughs> It's good. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a dumpling. Mm -hmm. The sauce is really good. Did you That's make my favorite this? sauce. No. Mmm. <laughs> Let me get French opera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good job, uh, boys. Taren, what, what would you? What do you think of it? Is it better than Florida style? Worse? And how? How? What a one to ten scale? How much would you rate it? I think Florida style. You think Florida still did better? Yeah. Mm, that's good. This honesty. is good, but <laughs> oh, well, that was good. It hurts. Mm. <laughs> what do you think, River? Um, uh, I want to be honest for myself, but this one's like the second best. Okay. I think you did a pretty good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. I don't mind eating it. I don't mind. <laughs>
make the pastry cream for the eclairs. So now we are going to add one cup of raw milk. So now we put our cream and raw milk on the stove on medium high heat. Then we add one tablespoon of vanilla, whisking continuously so it doesn't curdle or skim. In a separate bowl, add six tablespoons of sugar and two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Now I'm cracking my eggs. Now we add one whole egg and three egg yolks to, to the mix. Now we add our heated milk mixture into the egg mixture and temper the eggs. Tempering is whisking the eggs fast enough so they don't scramble. Faster. Faster. Now add the tempered mixture into the half milk mixture. Whisk until smooth and creamy. Now we put the plastic wrap onto our finished um, cream filling so it doesn't get gross. Now we crack four large eggs. Add about one egg mixing for 20 seconds. Keep doing it. I'm gonna let that go for about 30 seconds. Not to 30. So now you're going to put the dough into the piping bag and you are going to make cream puff and eclair shapes. Now you are going to sear your chicken in bacon fat to lock in the flavor. So now we're sauteing the vegetables and then after they're sauteed we're going to add the bacon and the chicken back in and add the wine and it's going to stew for about 45 minutes. Now add in three cups of French wine. It'll burn off after a while. So now you're going to add in the chicken and bacon. So um, now we're sauteing the onions so they caramelize, which kind of brings out the sugars. And that's actually why they caramelize. Because onions have a good amount of sugar in them. Mix onions, beef broth, and two tablespoons of butter. And one teaspoon of dried thyme in the pot. Now add the flour. So now um, we separated the egg, uh, three egg yolks and uh, juiced uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice out of a lemon. And now we're going to add them and basically whisk until it like double size. tempering the eggs and slowly adding the butter in oh. and we got to kind of work back and forth on the heat or not and then go from there or else the eggs will actually cook and we slowly add the butter in. I have a question. Yes. 
Why is the water popping? The sides are hot. Oh. <laughs> Why is the water popping? Today, um, Chef, Steve, Chef Steve told us that um, France is France food, more specifically, is split into rich food, rich people food, and peasant food, or I guess it was. And uh, personally, I actually like the peasant food better because I just like stews and just kind of old stuff, like leftovers mixed into other, like a stew or a soup. And yeah. Did you know that canning was invented in World War I when the French soldiers were on the battlefield for a long time and they needed their food to stay fresh? So my favorite thing that we cooked today was probably, um, mm, tard. I liked the Coco Vaughn, that was, that looked, that was pretty good. But I'm pretty sure I liked the French onion soup better. I don't know why, but maybe I'd have my mom's taste buds. I don't know, but yeah, I like that one the best. Did you know that the most useful paring knife for, for peeling asparagus is a paring knife? We've been reading Julia Child's uh, cookbook, um, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, for this podcast, and I actually learned that like all of, out, of, out of all the ways of cooking asparagus, Julia Child says that the French way is probably her favorite. I don't know why, but I guess it's really good. No wine should accompany cold asparagus with a vinegar-based sauce, as the vinegar will spoil the taste of the wine. <laughs>